everyone here. Um, we're going to be continuing our, uh, our classes on apologetics today. Um, today is going to be a little bit of a wonky one. We're going to dive into uh, Scientology today and what that is and what it looks like. Um, so, um, but before we get started, let me uh, open this up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that we have this time here to study uh, and I pray that we would study uh, other religions, other faiths, other ways of uh, believing that we know to be unbelief. We know to be in rebellion to you and to your word. And I pray that we would study it well so that we would understand and that we might bring these people uh, to an understanding of the gospel, an understanding of their sin and their need for a savior, and that savior being the one Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that uh, we would be faithful in bringing that message to all that we come into contact with. It is in his name we pray these things. Amen. Man, well, today we're going to be speaking here about the beliefs of this this cult, um, but it's not also just called a cult. Some call it a business, and you will see why. Uh, Scientology um, has its roots, uh, as most cults do, um, uh, centered around the personality of a single man, um, and that man uh, is the man L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, now, L. Ron Hubbard, uh, to give you a bit of background about him, uh, he was a, uh, an officer in the Navy during World War II. Um, and uh, he had uh, a not so good of a track record, and he uh, kind of liked to cover things up when he would do so. So the, the one instance being he, uh, he, had his, he was leading a ship uh, in the Pacific, and uh, he thought that uh, there was a, a Japanese submarine off the coast somewhere, and he had them expend all of their rounds firing into the sea, and there was nothing to show for it. All other intel showed that there was no Japanese submarine in that area, but he wrote the report and said that he had indeed sunk a Japanese submarine and wasted the military's uh, money. <laughs> He also had a, 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 an unfortunate incident uh, where he, uh, he bombarded a, an island uh, down in the South Pacific um, that uh, was, he said, it was a Japanese-owned island, but it was owned by our allies in Mexico. And he killed a bunch of people <laughs> um, that uh, he wasn't, yeah. So he, uh, and he would, yeah, fudge these reports to try to show that he was a good captain, but he ended up being... Uh, let go from the army. Uh, I don't know exactly how that, that played out, but then he goes into the civilian world and begins to do research into really uh, what we might call pop psychology. Um, and he is uh, kind of developing this theory of how to uh, get people um, to get over uh, traumatic events in their lives. And so he's uh, not uh, he's not doing this from an academic standpoint. He's really just taking cues from uh, pop psychology, from magazines and things of that nature. And he comes up with this uh, this method uh, that will eventually be called Dianetics. And this is just this is the name of the book that will eventually kind of be the the Bible for Scientology. Um, and uh, it describes how someone with a traumatic event that wants to get over that traumatic event needs to come in and uh, be examined um, by, and they will like put this like lie detecting kind of machine on you and then they'll ask you a bunch of very probing uh, questions for you to try to open up and uh, uh, get over uh, this, this past traumatic event. And so he goes on to write book after book after book to try to explain this process and it becomes uh, quite a, um, a a, a fact, right? And a lot of people start to follow uh, this method. And this is before it actually became uh, religious in nature at all. Um, it was just kind of this uh, this cult following of just this method of trying to, of, of pop psychology. Um, and uh, as that kind of started to get uh, off the ground, um, two, two problems crept up. So in, in the field, uh, people that were practicing this started to talk about how they believe that through this process of examining people and their lives and, and uh, their, their souls, as they would put it, they, they were discovering that their souls were in fact immortal and had past lives. And that there was these common things that were going on, so it was very popular in the field, 
uh, to to describe the soul as having been reincarnated essentially um, and so this is where the religious aspect starts to kind of pick up um, but then on the other side um, there were lawsuits going on um, and the the government was not very happy that Ron Hubbard was essentially teaching medicine uh, without the license and so he was uh, in some very big legal trouble that he had no money uh, to afford to be able to, to get through um, and so his solution to this was to take what was already kind of bubbling under the surface in this more religious aspect and to use that to fix the legal problem and say well you can't tell me to stop doing this because I'm a religious leader and I am teaching my followers how to act in my new religion so freedom of religion you can't touch me and so he formed uh, the Church of Scientology um, and so he kind of came at it from the angle still trying to keep that scientific aspect to it um, but I mean it was it became more and more religious over time um, and so the, the Church of Scientology uh, became very popular over many years they had started um, in New Jersey uh, the 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 kind of flagship one they finally made after there were several that were being made uh, in DC what they called the founding Church of Scientology uh, that was after there had been one that had crept up in LA and so it was really spreading uh, quite uh, quite a lot around the US um, and so uh, so he yeah started to he L. Ron Hubbard was um, the, the leader uh, in essence right he became almost like a, a pope kind of figure and much of the critiques of Scientology was that it really was uh, not very scientific at all not only did it have very uh, questionable practices in the the psychological aspect of it uh, but there was a very cultish um, uh, unquestioning following of, of Hubbard and whatever he said and as he grew older he started to say some things that were uh, a little more uh, out there as we will see once we kind of dive into uh, their beliefs and what they believe about uh, the universe and, and people and their place in it um, but uh, uh, they continue to, to harp on this one thing this Dianetics this this psychological uh, way to get what they would call eventually called getting clear uh, to be clear um, is to get rid of those problems in your life so it became more than just getting past traumatic events uh, it became just this almost self-help program it was well are you an alcoholic come get examined go to to Dianetics and you can overcome your alcoholism um, or any other problems that you might have in your life and then you will be clear once you are clear you can see clearly and you can live your best life and it was that kind of really just self-help kind of idea that was behind the whole thing um, and so uh, that uh, kind of took off eventually Hubbard uh, he he retired he was coming under a lot of heat there were still a lot of ongoing lawsuits the Church of Scientology has uh, been accused um, and convicted of things like fraud um, of uh, even some some parts of the, the church trying to infiltrate parts of the government to make things go their way in certain aspects um, and so uh, there was a lot of heat for him so he uh, at the end of his life he retired and he used a bunch of the money that he gained from these followers um, to buy a boat and he uh, kind of became a monk for many years on the boat off the coast where he would do a lot of his research and he published several more books and then he uh, passed away and so um, that is kind of how the whole thing got started and some other people took his spot but uh, um, now it is a, a quite a popular uh, belief system even if it's not something that we see every day of course here uh, we see way more Mormons we see way more Muslims or Jews or, or people uh, in those religions but Scientology still is uh, a, a popular belief there is uh, quite a few of them in, in places like Houston and Dallas um, around uh, here at least and um, they uh, they have I can't elaborate but Nevada I yes into one of their offices yes it was very strange Yes, and we will, yes, because there is a... The first thing they wanted was like a donation of like $10,000. And that's where, that's why people call it a business sometimes instead of a cult. It is their point, really from most, from a lot of people's perspective, is not to get people clear. 
It's not because of the, it's not that they have these religious beliefs. It's that they can get money out of people, um, and they do that quite effectively. Um, and so, uh, well, they're self they're <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, so I'll tell you. So whenever I was doing some research, I um, sorry, no, no, you're good. Um, there was a um, the the guy that I was listening to. He was an ex, a guy that was in it, and he was in it for quite a long time, and he got <laughs> got through many of the levels. Uh, but he was a, an ex, uh, a ranger, a ranger in the army, um, and um, but he was uh, he had a, a bit of an alcoholic problem, um, and his wife didn't uh, didn't appreciate that, and so uh, she uh, he was kind of looking to uh, to remedy this problem. I uh, couldn't seem to shake it, and uh, he walked into one of their offices, um, and because they it, to him it kind of just felt like going to. Uh, like an office of a, a, a psychologist or something like that, and what they what happened is he goes in there and there was another guy there that seemed to be a guy that was just off the street, and so they just started talking together. It seemed like that they were both coming in for a very similar problem, and so they were just talking back and forth. And he told them about his alcoholism. He told them about his wife and his time in the army and all of this stuff. And they were just chatting. Well, then the the leader of whatever that little office was there in Houston. Uh, uh, came out and he started uh, telling him that he he knew a way for him to get clear and that, that he himself as the leader of this uh, organization in Houston was clear himself and he knew how to get him to stop uh, abusing alcohol but he said this without uh, the guy even saying anything about his alcohol problem which of course come to find out the guy that was there that was off the street talking to him had a, a mic with him uh, on his his the, the other guy was listening to the whole time so that he could like, act like, like he could like a yes exactly so it was really just a, a show the whole time so that this guy seemed to have some kind of magical mind reading psychic powers um, and so but that for this RV Ranger the, this was enough to uh, to convince him and he was like well if you can if you can help me get over my alcohol problem, my wife would be so happy, and that's that's all I want. So let's let's go. And so he uh, so he, he kind of signs up, and they say, okay. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go through uh, these Dianetic um, sessions with us, and they're going to cost you one thousand dollars an hour. And he was like, that's I don't know if I can afford that. And they're like, but don't you want to get better? Don't you want to? get rid of your alcohol problem. And so he was finally like, okay, okay, we'll, we'll do that. And so that they, they get a lot of money out of people this way by going through these, these sessions. Um, and so in these sessions, he's opening up and he's going through um, their, their program. And as you're going through the program, uh, you start to go through what they call levels, and these levels, and they, they're just like, it's just like a, a game, level one, level two, level three, eventually you get high enough, and once you get high enough, once you get to level three, you get to learn the secret of the universe. And once you hear the secret of the universe, it's really hard not to laugh at what this, <laughs> this is, because this is what the, this, so this army ranger made it to level three, and he, the secret of the universe is, that there was an evil galactic overlord named Zanu. <laughs> and he ruled a large confederacy of planets. And there was a great rebellion and he had to put it down. And so one of the things that he did in this is he took three trillion what we call Thetans. These are soul-like extraterrestrial creatures and he put them on Earth. And everyone on Earth is a physical manifestation of a Thetan. And so this was the secret behind the universe and everything that existed. And what being clear meant was to realize that you were a Thetan and to realize that, that, that soul, that you had, you had a past life. But that past life wasn't like reincarnation like uh, the Hindus believe. Um, it was a past life on a different world, on a, some alien planet because you were one of the Thetans that had been transported over here. <laughs> if, if, if anybody's seen the movie Battlefield Earth with John Travolta, that movie's based around... Yes, that yes. Movie. Yeah, he's, 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 that so, movie's based around all 
Exactly. Yes, and that's where you realize, wait, this is just this is just science fiction. This is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so um, now that was that used to be quite uh, quite a secret that uh, only those who got through the Scientology program up high enough. Uh, to be uh, level three or higher, and then after that you could get to become what, what's called an operating thetan, which is someone who had gotten clear, really knew the secrets, and knew how to guide people. And so they're like they're like the priestly class of the of the society, right? They're the guy that had come out and greeted him at the beginning. That would have been an operating thetan. Um, and so it was. Uh, it's it's almost it has this kind of. Uh, a Gnostic feel, right? You gained the secret knowledge, and that now that you have that knowledge, um, you uh, you are part of the special class. You are an, uh, an operating thetan, and so, um, but uh, of course, because this is so secretive, and because it costs so much time and money to get to the point where you learn the secret of the universe, they guard this very zealously. So if you make it to that point, and then you want to leave. They really are not happy about that, and there are many stories of them coming and tracking you down. So this army ranger went through a very similar process, so he left it after so many years. Uh, his wife had grown up Christian, and she, uh, she wasn't Christian at the time that, that he joined the cult, uh, but she had enough training in her background to, to know that there was something amiss here, and so she refused to to keep going like he kept going um, and after he got high enough they told him that he needed to leave her um, because she uh, she was a, an impediment for him getting clear and so he needed to leave her behind um, and but he uh, of course he had joined this program to get rid of his alcoholism because he loved his wife so that of course didn't didn't work with him and he said okay nope we're done here um, and they were like, no, you can't be done here. We'll trap you down. So he left Houston and he moved up to, to Lubbock, where he is now. Um, and uh, then he got several phone calls and they're like, we know where you are. We, we will come get you. But of course, at, this, at that point, he, he is an army ranger. So he does have quite an arsenal. And he was like, okay, fine. You know where I live? Yeah. Feel free to come. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, they did not show up. Um, but, um, um, but there are stories of people who do, uh, who, who do get uh, bullied and harassed um, to try and come back uh, because they don't want people to know the, the secrets of the universe. Um, of course, now uh, WikiLeaks has published the secrets of the universe, uh, the 682-page document that talks all about Zanu and his his uh what he wants to do and um there was a great a big court case where the church of scientology sued wikileaks and said you can't publish this we have copyrights and they said no you're a religious organization people need to be free to practice religion in whatever way they see fit so wikileaks can continue to publish this and it was <laughs> um, so it became um yeah so now you can go learn the secrets of the universe without paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, um, <laughs> and so it, uh, yeah. So that is really kind of the, um, the gist of, of the religion, uh, if, you, if you will. Of course, uh, we all know it's quite famous because of some famous practitioners like, um, like John Travolta, like uh, uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, so, so, so back on the Tom Cruise part, mm -hmm. and you were talking about the problems with this. Yeah, there was all that big media leak that uh, what was his girlfriend at the time, or they married for? Uh, yeah, Katie Nicole Kidman. Holmes. She was like in Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. like she was brainwashed. Yeah. And yep, forced like kind of in this Scientology slavery or whatever. There was, I mean, well, he eventually left left her because the Church of Scientology told him to. Because she was becoming an impediment. Well, she, well, she became this big thing on the news, I'm sure. They're like part <laughs> Yeah, they're just like, the get rid of that. That's going to be a, a problem for us. With this one because she's a big name, he's a big name. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's a, Yeah, yep. It's it's crazy. Um, so. Uh, Do they have a worship service or something? 
Not that that I could tell in in my my findings. It was really these these sessions that you go to regularly. That was their ritual. That was their kind of form of, Hoods, of practice. Circle, what? Hoods, circle, oh, <laughs> not quite. Uh, it's more like <laughs> suits and jackets. And, yeah. <laughs> yes, lots and lots of cash. Um, and so. Um, it has a, a big connection, like I kind of mentioned already, to um, to Gnosticism and to Platonism. I don't know if we've talked about that. That was an uh, an ancient um, practice or religious practice during the time of the early church. Um, and so Gnostic being these people, there were many forms of Gnosticism, but its main tenet was that there was a secret knowledge that only the elect could have. Not elect in the Calvinistic sense, elect in just that these higher class of people who knew the secret knowledge and they had special access and special power to a certain extent um, and that there were kind of the, the unwashed masses and they, they, they just lived their lives. And, um, and then Platonism uh, has this idea of the, um, the uh, a migration of, of souls, um, which is it, it very similar to the Hindu idea of reincarnation. And so, um, so both of those ideas are kind of manifesting in a science, science fiction overlay um, in this idea. And it, it was like Platonism, like Gnosticism, there was an intense introspective idea, um, right? Gnosticism and Platonism, or Platonism specifically, uh, or Neoplatonism, I guess, really more uh, accurately, uh, has a philosophical bend, right? Plato and his followers and then the Neoplatonists were not uh, looking to be religious necessarily at first. Um, and we're more philosophical, more in perspective, trying to find the meaning of life, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that, that comes into the, the Dianetic sessions and trying to kind of self-help, trying to make yourself a better person and find the meaning of life. So um, it really is, is it's kind of, it's, it's Neoplatonism kind of overlaid with modern, uh, modern pop psychology and science fiction. So. Um, that is uh, that is Scientology in, in a nutshell. Um, as as far as as kind of our um, as, as our our dealings with them and the way that we might uh, approach them, I think we kind of have to start. There's so many kind of different crazy aspects, and it's very. I think it would be hard for us to not just write it off as as ridiculous. Um, uh, but there are people that are being, they're being duped, right? They're really just being fooled into thinking uh, that this is all true. Um, and they have an incentive to do so, right? Uh, I think what, what we kind of miss sometimes in apologetics is that people don't jump fences uh, intellectually um, just because you can prove to them that what they believe is, is false. Um, they, 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 maybe we think that they ought to, but a lot of times there is a greater barrier to the change. And so what, what, what I think one thing we have to consider then is this, if they're being duped, they have just spent, say, $200,000 to find out the secrets of the universe and all of this stuff. And so you coming to them and, and, and showing, it just very calmly and collectively, showing them that uh, this is uh, there's just really no substantiation for these these beliefs um, is telling them that they've just wasted two hundred thousand um, dollars and uh, of course we know that to be true they have unfortunately wasted that money uh, it's it's not something that people will easily just believe so as we take them to the scriptures and we are patient with them um, I think that's just a helpful thing to understand, especially as a helpful thing to understand in any apologetic situation. There is more, normally more of an emotional barrier than an intellectual barrier that we have to overcome. And people, there is a higher cost of entry to some people, or I guess a higher cost, cost of exiting whatever they really are in, um, than, than just, uh, just logical proof and reasoning and working the, with them in, in the text. I, I would still say, of course, we are we pay, are patient with them. We show them uh, they they have an understanding of of sin to a certain extent, right? If they if they know there's something wrong with them, and they need to get clear. We can say, well, you are right. There is something wrong with you, right? Cling on to that which they they state, which we know to be true, and say, but you could never make yourself clear, even if you tried. And and maybe start to 
see how their worldview does get some things right, but that they truly, deep down, do understand that that's not something that they can get to on their own, right? That, that they do need a savior. They do need some outside, um, outside themselves that can that will save them from their sin because they know deep down that their sin is not something that they can deal with, even after session and after session after session, um, and. Um, and then try to, to get them to understand that, yes, we do believe in a higher power. He's just not an intergalactic overlord. Uh, he is the God of the universe, and he is holy and, uh, and mighty. And, and so just it, is, uh, it, will, it will differ with each person. They will even claim that they, uh, their religious beliefs uh, are not necessarily absolute. They are not, uh, they are not against believing in a God. They just believe in the in Zanu and the Thetans and all of that um, and so but you might believe in a god above that and it's not really for them to say so uh, they 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 try to sidestep some things about being a religion and try to own other parts of being a religion where it's convenient for them and it just becomes a, a hodgepodge so um, so yeah uh, questions comments